this is Brian Townsend and uh, Isaac Barron. Uh, we're here today with a special heads up video against um, a really tough opponent, uh, Isaac Caxton, who is uh, loved the WNBA. Uh, can you t tell me a little bit about your reads on him and stuff? Yeah, um, me and Isaac, I uh, have a lot of respect for his game, and uh, we play a lot versus each other, part because uh, I guess both of us have trouble getting action versus other people, and I think both of us uh, respect each other's game, but also like the action that the other one gives. And uh, yeah, I think uh, when this video was filmed, um, I I was up probably a decent amount of him, decent amount on him lifetime. But over the past uh, few sessions, he'd been getting the better of me. And so yeah, that's kind of where the uh, the background is um, when this starts. Okay. So getting started. Uh, one thing I know you said before the game, you thought that he was opening every single small blind. Yeah, I know for a hundred percent. I mean, we played a lot and like he, that's just his style. He just never folds, uh, in, in the small blind on the button and that's just how he plays. So, um, I, I like to definitely, and he also folds to a lot of three bets because he's opening so many hands. And so I, I do like to do a decent amount of three betting, although we're playing uh deeper. So, uh, I'll do, do it a little bit less just because, um, I expect him to, to, kind of be able to maneuver and four bed and call and, you know, bluff raise flops a lot more when we're deeper. So what, uh, what percent of hands do you think roughly you'd be three betting? Um, uh, I guess depending on game flow, I mean, I don't know, maybe 15%, 15%. Okay. So, so a lot, you'd be three mm. betting them a lot. Yeah, Which actually, is, probably probably less than that. Well, no, that, I mean, I think that could be a perfectly reasonable against a player like this. Um, probably is a really good strategy, actually. Yeah. I would think it would be about 15 to 20% of your hands. 20 might be a little high. Yeah, I, I think sure. it's probably more like 15 and maybe even a little, a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. And then what about your small blind? I saw you fold 10-4 10, 10 or something earlier in race 3-5. What what hands are you opening from the small blind? Um. Yeah, I mean... uh. I like opening, I guess, hands like 3-5 that have a little bit more potential than a hand like 10-4 just because 3-5 has a lot of straight potential. It, You know, it's got, it's got like cards that, I mean, the same as 10-4, obviously, that can make two pairs and stuff like that. But I guess it's just a little more sneaky. And um, I don't know, I like raising hands like that. But I also be raising pretty much all my face card hands. And uh, all my suited hands, I'm, I'm raising like most of most of my hands on the button. Um, so with this five three offsuit hand, I think the first two streets are pretty standard. I yeah. mean, uh, there's a lot of fours and sevens that you might be able to move them off on the turn right. or set up a river bluff. Uh, it looks like you went ahead and checked here. Can you tell me a little bit about why you decided to check instead of bluff? Yeah, I mean that's also a lot to do with our history. Um, he just Especially, it seems in the beginning of matches, he likes to kind of set a precedent for not being uh, able to get moved off like medium strength, marginal hands, and he kind of seems like he likes to set a precedent by like the first three barrel or something like that that I'll make. He, he usually likes to call it down, and I just didn't didn't feel like he was going to fold. I, I felt like he was going to call down, and he definitely was oh, not going to yeah. fold. <laughs> he would snap call down. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that's a uh, it's a fine check behind early. I think. Um, how often was he four betting you in your previous matches? Um, he a, a decent amount. I would say more often than than calling for sure. Yeah. And yeah, he's uh, he's not calling very often. He's four betting um, not as much as actually as you would expect, but. Also, we uh, haven't been playing uh, at deep tables like this very often. We're usually at like maybe one deep table and two uh, 100 big blinds tables or something like that. So I was expecting him to be four betting a little more often than he had in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I feel like here it's a pretty standard call um, after he four bets. I mean, I expect him to be four betting a wide range that includes like obviously hands for value and then bluff hands that and king jack suited just flops you know I, I expect it to be able to flop well enough to where 
if I flop a decent draw or a pair, that I'm going to be comfortable enough getting it in against his range to where I think I can defend. Do you think he four bets like king queen type stuff here, or is he always calling with us? I, I think that. Oh, I mean, he is the type that is very big into balancing. So if there is someone who who would be, you know, uh, four betting those type of hands just to balance, I mean, he could be the guy. But I would still expect him to be calling the vast majority of the time. Yeah, because I think most players' strategy in a spot like this, their four betting range. Is, is real polarized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I would expect his to be a little bit less so, but still uh, still somewhat polarized. Okay. So after you 4-bet then, if you're 4-betting about 15% of hands, you're folding about half of them. Through that, I mean. Yeah. If he 4-bets you, you're calling with half, re-raising with maybe, you know, uh, a quarter of them. And then folding a quarter type of thing? I'd roughly. say something like that, yeah. And like I was saying, this is, I mean, the flop that I'm just, I mean, I feel like it's really standard just as a balancing and as a, just is our flow that, I, I mean, I think raising and getting in in here is pretty standard. And do you think um, he, if he had think, something like Jack 10 or Jack 9 or Jack 4, I think any he's hand, stacking off? I think that... He, I mean, I've seen him in spots like this stack off with ace high, like snap stack off. And yeah. I mean, he's just the type that, uh, I mean, he's just, I, I think if he decides to bet his ace high, which I don't think he would all the time, or yeah. bet his pocket tens or whatever hand that he has some showdown value with, he's just never going to fold it, I don't okay. think. So I think it's a pretty standard stack off. Yeah. Um, I guess I guess my only comment about that hand. I think it's fine if he's four betting you with a wide range. I just think you have to be careful enough that his four betting range isn't, you know, a really strong range because King Jack yeah. actually plays horrendously poor against, uh, obviously, you know, the top two and a half percent of I hands agree. or three percent of hands. But if he is four betting you with, you know, six percent of hands, see that's the problem. It's like if you're three betting them, let's say with twenty percent of hands. And he four bets you. I mean, it's pretty interesting. And oh, okay. sorry to interrupt, but no, no, no. Uh, yeah, it's a problem. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. Why don't you go ahead? Um, yeah. Side. So I uh, let's pause it here. I, so it went. But he check called the flop, and the turn went check check. And here, I think that I uh, I make a really big mistake, and I'm not really sure what I was thinking. And I I go ahead and put in a raise, and I think for a player like. Uh, I, it's just, I, I feel like you're just going to get really, I mean, it's just such a, I, I, I really just don't like my raise. He doesn't expect me to, I mean, he's just going to know exactly what I have, a flush, and he's just going to be able to call or even raise to try and get me off of it. And he's pretty much never going to pay me off unless maybe it's like a jack high flush or something like that, a hand that, you know, that can beat other stuff. So I, I feel like Versus a person who's real good at reading hands and also good at exploiting like stuff that's exploitable, uh, I feel like raising here is just stupid. And I'm not sure why I did it. Yeah, I think that's because my initial reaction. I didn't even see the flop or turn, but my initial reaction is raise away. But I think that's a really good, good sound logic actually. And I think, I think it's tough because it's it's like then you're not balanced because you're never raising right. with any hands. But these situations come up so infrequently right. that I think it's fine. Uh, and yeah, I do think calling with these stacks is good because Ike will three bet bluff this river, yeah, and, exactly. and it's too. gross when he raises. And here, if, well, it sounds like he raises. Yeah, it sounds like he just got to flip a coin here. I mean, yeah, yeah, he has nine eight nine seven in his range. Uh, but you know, it's like yeah, it's, take your choice. Exactly. I mean, I I felt like. It was basically flipping a coin. I felt like also the, chance, the the fact that he just won the big pot over here maybe makes it a little more likely that he might get a little more out of line since he's already up 10k. And yeah, you know, I just I ended up just clicking call and I was yeah. wrong. I I I think once you get raised here, it's just so close that yeah. it it probably doesn't matter too much. Right. Um. And the the only thing that might sway it is if he doesn't think you're ever bluffing. He knows you have a flush. He might not try to bluff you off a flush. That's true. That's kind of one reason to say more likely fold. But I think he's tough enough and makes enough moves that it's, it's just 
a tough spot. Yeah. But you're right. I do like your analysis of just, just, um, just calling that river yeah. bet against a guy who leads hands well. Yeah, it's one of those spots where when I was playing, I, I was just kind of like, like you said, you know, raise away just as a, just an initial reaction. And then I kind of thought about the hand a little after the session. And it was just like, you know, just I just realized that raising there is just really not a good play at all. It's just yeah. something that's going to get me owned in every which way. And, you know, the more I think about it, uh, this might be totally results-based, but if he does put you on a made hand, I don't think he's going to try to move you off it. Yeah. I mean, I think he'd have to be kind of tilted or be really kind of spazzing out to try to move you off a made hand. I mean, if he thinks that you're never bluffing that river with a raise and you've got a flush there, he's not going to try to three bet bluff you off there. Um, so talk a little bit about the left hand table. You decided not to three bet. Yeah. Uh, just cause it doesn't play great. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a hand that I will three bet occasionally, but I prefer usually just calling with it, especially with yeah. stacks like this. Um, I just, you know, it's just a hand that kind of sucks to get called with when you three bet. And yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like the flop, um, you know, Obviously, like I'm saying, against a tough player, it kind of sucks because he is going to barrel a bunch. But at the same time, I mean, I can't, you can't just, I can't just check fold, you know, mm -hmm. a pretty strong hand in my range when I'm defending. defending yeah. yeah, yeah, I think check calling the flop's fine, and any equity that you pick up on the turn, you obviously need to check call again. Yeah. You know, here's a great spot where I think he's just going to barrel, barrel you with a ton of hands because your hand does look like what it is. But I think when you check call the turn. Here, your range becomes a lot tighter because yeah. I think you'd fold a lot of ace sixes, ace sevens, ace eights to a turn bet. I think, I'm not sure what I end up doing, but I wouldn't be surprised if I fold it. I, th I think you need to peel the turn there after yeah. you check call the flop. He's barreling there a ton, and I think uh, you have plenty of showdown value and enough equity of your outs. Plus, he might you know, try to barrel you off the five of the aces rivered type of thing. So. Okay. I, I agree. I think that, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of one of those spots where I guess my head was spinning a little bit, just got and stacked other twice. Hands, yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, that's heads up no limit. Like, yeah, definitely. You just have big swings. So what's your value range for four betting him? Like, what are you going to be four betting and getting it in with? Um, I think that uh, tens plus for Sims and uh, probably ace queen suited is a pretty fine range. 200 bucks. Uh, yeah, I think okay. against him. I mean, because for a hundred blinds, I would be doing it with like, like almost like with like a Ace really Jack high range. Type yeah, stuff because and... he's like, he's gonna be put, putting it in with pay, any pair, like yeah. any Ace Jack, Ace Tens, a lot, King Queen. I mean, he's just the type that a hundred blinds. I mean, in his mind, it's just with how aggressive he plays. Which I mean, he's right. You know, he's just he's gonna put it in with a ton ton of hand free flops. So. Yeah. Even uh, with 200 blinds, I think 10s plus and ace queen suited plus is a pretty pretty reasonable nice. range. Yeah, I think uh, I think against Ike you can get it on the base queen. I think it's one of those spots where uh, it's it's really close and kind of sick when it happens. But yeah, it's it's probably okay, especially if you guys have been playing very aggressive. Now, when you defended with this Jack Nine offsuit, if you had C bet the flop, what would you have done? Um, I would mix it up. Um, Right now, since um, I think that he, this the way that our dynamic is, he wouldn't expect me to be bluff raising this flop all, all that much since he knows I'm stuck and he knows it may look like I'm tilted. So I would probably just end up peeling and calling all the way down. But there are definitely times when, depending on the game flow, I'd be check raising and going for a couple of streets of value. Okay. Or get him to float you type of right. thing. Check yeah. raise, flop, bet turn, check call river maybe yeah, type some, thing. Stuff or, like that, definitely. Because yeah. he's definitely type who's capable. Now what's his value raising range or what do you perceive his value raising range is here on the turn? Um, it's definitely uh definitely has like ace tens. Um he is the type who's capable of like playing a hand like aces like this. Mm -hmm. Although it is it is definitely on the rare side and I, I would expect, especially since I just check called and then check folded the turn, I would expect him to usually be going for value uh, with his like over pairs and good nine type hands. So I would expect that usually it's like a 10 
and uh, and a good ten, and that's about it. So I'd say. Usually, and what about a draw? Yeah, I'd say a lot of a like lot of times a draw. A lot of okay. times, I mean, a lot of times, almost always, it's either a draw or just a blow. A draw, a random bluff for a ten is his entire yeah, range, that's right, pretty much. So how do you go about then figuring out what the best action is? Um, well, I, I mean, I, I feel like definitely calling and, uh, you know, hoping a really bad river card. I mean, and check calling usually most rivers, unless like something like the eight or the king of hearts peels off. Yeah. Where it's just like every single draw gets there and he bombs it, you know, then maybe I'd find a check fold. But usually I'm going to be check calling, I think, against Ike. And I think that's really good because if you look at the combinations of 7-8, queen-jack, king-queen even, um, what other types of pans, verse, or a random bluff versus his actual 10s, he's going to have way more, if he's not balancing it correctly, he's going to have way more bluffs than he has made hands. Right. And so there's going to be a lot of value. Now, the thing that gets tricky is when you call here, you have to you know, approximate his bluffing frequency because a lot of people right. might check the river with queen jack yeah, type stuff. Yeah, that's exactly, that's definitely one of the biggest problems because I definitely don't think, well, his bluffing frequency after getting called is is definitely higher than like some and most. It's still not like nearly as high as when he's, as when he's bluffing here. Yeah, and so now it's like one of those double-edged swords where a card that looks like, like it's hitting my range so, but like, it also looks like it's hitting his range. Yeah, because when you call the turn here, he's not putting you on any draw, I don't think. No, no. Uh, not with, not being out of position. So he's putting you either on a 9 or a 10. And or so like it's pocket 7. Stuff yeah. Right. And so it's a really tough spot for him, for him to bluff. And there we see he didn't. So, so I think that hand's really, really interesting. And I think the things that I found most interesting were, uh, accounting for his turn bluffing frequency was incredibly high. I mean, we didn't even put things like King-7 in his right. range, and we still thought that there's way more combos of Queen-Jack than there are tens. Right, definitely. And even some, some like, if he has, like, a random, like, a 10-deuce, I don't think, I think he's a lot less likely to raise than he has, like, an ace-10, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so, it even, so it makes it even less, less so. Like yeah, because yeah, there's not all tens, you're right. right. Um, so I think that's... That's a really good spot to call and then decide on the river. The river's really tough because he's a good player and he's gonna. You saw there he checked behind right. with a lot of stuff. So um, I think the river would be a tough tough to call against him. Yeah. I think the best line might even be call turn fold fold all rivers even if you don't think he bluffs enough. Yeah, but. I I mean I don't know. I think against him it, that might be the the best to. Like to start out, but he'll he'll, he'll, he'll adjust. He's, yeah, he's smart enough definitely to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, and you're right against a lot of weaker players. You can call the turn and fold the river because they're not bluffing the river enough. Because when you do call the turn, it's pretty clear you have some type of hand with showdown. Right. So what do you think of his turn race with King Seven? I mean, um, I think it's I think it's good. I mean, I think that uh, he expects me to to be bluffing uh, there a, a good amount. I mean, he expects me. I mean. He, and it's definitely a spot where it's a real good for his balancing because, you know, like like you said, it, I mean, it puts me in a real tricky spot when I have a 9 and he actually has the, the 10. And it's it's just, you know, against some people, like a weaker player who never has the king 7s or the, the whatever it may be, you know, I have an easy check fold on the river. But, uh, you know, against him, it's, it's just it makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah. I think the only concern I would have is, yeah, there's a lot of semi-bluffs in your range, but there's also um, his king high, actually, when you fold, is going to be the best hand a lot. That's true. So it's kind of like one of those things where you can't really call profitably, but with a hand with that much showdown, it's almost like I would rather have him do it with, like, queen eight rather right. than king seven, something like an overcard in a gutter right. where he gets you to fold out a lot of worse hands. I mean, almost with a king seven... I don't think you're really betting that too, too many hands there on the turn. Yeah. So it's almost like a weird thing where he's raising as a bluff, but his hand when he folds his best, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. That can still be the most profitable line. Right. It's just kind of one of those. Yeah, weird. it's definitely true. I'm definitely not going to – I'm definitely maybe going to have ace high occasionally, but it's definitely going to be a lot more likely that his king high is either going to be good or I'm going to have a hand that I'm going to continue with. So why did you decide to jack back the jack 7-7 seven, seven club? 
Um, just kind of as a as a balancing, and also just uh, because he just really likes to just never give up on these pair board type things. He, he's a, he's real big just check calling and check raising, and yeah, he's just I I just I don't I don't like firing uh, these pair boards all the time against him because he'll just start you know just really going to, to yeah. so what do you yeah. think he put you on when you check called or when you check behind that bot? do you think he put you on total air like you had or um i think that he knows that i can have total air but i mean it's definitely i think he thinks it's more likely that i have a hand like ace high or you know maybe pocket threes a hand with some showdown value that i don't want to get check raised or and, I, and i'm not really comfortable getting a couple streets of value from him so i think he thinks it's more likely that i have a hand like ace high so what do you think he has on this river when he check calls the turn? Um, I think he has like eight nine a lot, pocket eights a lot. Um, okay. I, I think that he has a lot of times he he he's check calling and he's worried that maybe I might have you know like a jack in my range or something like that and that I won't bet the river and that but but I will pay him off um, if he if he goes ahead and bets it himself. Okay, fair enough. How long ago was this played? Um, probably. What is it now? I'd say probably almost three months ago now. So it's been a while. We I don't. I think we may have played once since, but uh, I know he's been playing a lot at the WSOP, and I've been mm -hmm. playing a lot at the WSOP. So I, I, I don't. We our paths kind of haven't crossed. Yeah. And so here it looks like on the left hand table, you go ahead and make a bet. Um. What what do you think he checked back the flop with and called the turn? Um, I mean, I think that he's capable of having ace high. He's capable of having seven. He's capable, you know, of having even he's even capable of having a nine. Although obviously I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Um. He's he's capable of having a six and getting tricky with it. Although I think especially since he just showed down a, a turn check back flop and then bluff raised uh, the. The turn, he would uh, be more likely to raise if he turned trips. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just didn't see much value in going for a check raise, both because he knows that uh, I like doing that against him because he's really aggressive and he, he likes to bet a lot of rivers with thin value and for bluffs. And so he's kind of adjusted and and started checking back a little bit more with his thin value type hands. Mm -hmm. And also because he thinks it's just a good spot for me to bluff. I, I agree. I think this would be a horrible spot for a yeah. check raise because so much of his range is ace highs or, you know, yeah, stuff like that. That yeah. just ace high or a seven. That's not gonna bet. Well, I guess he might bet a seven, but yeah, I don't um, even think he bet a seven. Yeah, he might just... not. Um, I. What about your bet sizing? Why six hundred versus seven or pot? Um, um I guess just kind of just because that's just more of my standard of sizing and mm -hmm. more. I think more. He, if, if I bet real big, I think he'd perceive it a lot stronger, stronger yeah. and it's something that I should probably work on sizing and balancing more, but against him, it's just, I think it's just better just to be consistent right. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think he might end up paying me off there, but I'm not sure. It looks like he's got something like Ace High now. Yeah. And he's debating if you have an 8. So now if you check raised you on this flop, would you peel? Um, I, uh, I think that uh, I'd probably be peeling a decent amount of the time. Um, and I think here's spot a good spot to go for uh, value definitely three streets yeah definitely because um, he's gonna put you on something like nine, turn nine ten or an eight is your only value range right I mean and I, he's just like uh, yeah that and which is why I've started uh, just betting a lot thinner for value against him mm -hmm. especially some not not always going for three streets but sometimes going for just the flop and turn because I feel like he views that as a lot um, 
like he feels like three streets I'm a lot less likely to bluff maybe than uh then flop and turn, and he, he feels like he can sometimes, you know, check call down his ace highs and then check bold river um, mm. where, you know, and so I've, I've started going for thinner value and also three barreling a little bit more than I had in, in the past. Yeah, that, that sounds like a very, very good strategy. Whenever somebody is range is weaker on the river, you obviously want to be bluffing more, and it sounds like, He's check calling you very, very lightly when he knows he has equity to improve and um, he could have the best hand. Right. And you need to really take advantage of that um, on the river. Nice river. Yeah. Yeah, and like here, like he's check calling like so many hands that I'm beating um, that I feel like going for a a flop in turn and possibly uh, some river. rivers. Yeah, some yeah. Rivers. The jack's pretty pretty tough. So you had queen jack in the right hand. He had, yeah, he had uh, top pair and paid me off. Really straight. So that's interesting to note that after you check that flop, actually let's go back because that's that's pretty telling there. Um, after you check this flop back, he check called with queen jack. Yeah. So. You figure his betting range on the turn then is like pocket sevens, which I bet he re-raises you. Right. Pocket nines, pocket jacks, he re-raises you. Uh, the only hands for value he's really betting the turn are bluffs, and there's a ton of them. Think of all the gutters, all the diamond and spade draws, and um, a nine. Yeah, make it nine or something like that. Yeah, definitely. And maybe like a straight eight ten or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, definitely uh, in spots like this, I think especially because the middle card uh, paired, he just he views that as like a really strong card for my range, I think. And he, mm -hmm. especially on like a flop like this where it's real, uh, it's it's real textured. Um, he expects me to be checking back a nine like a lot well, of times, uh, so that's why I think his his, uh, his betting range is definitely a lot more polarized. Yeah, so I think these little hands where like. We got to showdown. We saw you saw Queen Jack. It's like it's so easy to just be like, okay, you had Queen Jack. That's fine. He called. He had top pair, whatever. But I think the important, the thing that really struck me again is um, that he's not leading this turn with anything. And whenever he does lead these turns, we should be bluff raising him 100 percent of the time because yeah. he has draws or occasionally some rando nine. But a bluff raise will be incredibly right. profitable. Yeah, so, I agree. So I think that's I something think, to look for. In to the, be honest, in I think that I was probably going to go for a bluff raise if he did bet this turn, especially okay. just because the nine looks so good for my, like I, like I was right. saying before, yeah. yeah. So I think that's uh, hopefully in the future you can take advantage of that. And here I agree. I think the jack's a pretty rough card to try to get another street of value. Yeah. Plus you sometimes value time yourself. Yeah. Uh, I, think I, I don't think he was going to fold. I think I would end it up. Yeah, he might have, but I think I would end up value time. So, yeah. It's close, though. It is. I mean, because I don't think he has too many pens in his No. Some, though. So, here, if he four bets you, you'll just go ahead and five bet, get it in? Um. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So what are you doing on boards like this for him, where when you check call, you know, it's pretty hard to, I guess, once he bets you. And so on the right, I'm assuming you think you have the Stone Cold Nuts? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, if he has a pocket fours or pocket threes, I mean, you know, it's good luck to him, but I don't think he, he has them too often. Yeah. I mean, I definitely, yeah, definitely, it's pretty much the nuts. So, this is actually a really good line by him because yeah. it's so unlikely that you have a hand. Anything. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And it's it's a spot where, like, I was pretty tempted to call, but it's just like, yeah, just kind he's of just, still got six outs, even yeah. when the times you do make the hero call, and sometimes he's got. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, like, the it's, it's one of those spots where I just kind of just let him have it. What about checking back this flop? With Any the, value in it with the nut with straight? The, um, yeah, I think there's some value in it, but um, I mean, and I do, 
uh, have definitely started to incorporate slow playing like mm-hmm. on the flop more often. But uh, I just felt like, you know, I just felt like in this spot I was just going to go for value. Okay. This is a pretty interesting hand on the, the right, I believe. So what are your thoughts here? Um, my thoughts are that obviously uh, he he rarely has me beat, and he he's bluffing a lot. But it just seems it, it seemed really I, I I have trouble putting him on a hand besides like a nine ten type thing, um, or or just like a, a lower flush that that could beat me because I didn't think he'd be uh, raising with like a jack with a flush draw. I didn't think He'd be, and obviously I have the king of hearts, so I have the, the nut flush draw, and I didn't think that uh, he'd be slow playing too many hands on the flop, um, and so I, I had a, a tough time. But I, I also didn't think that if I if I re-raise, I think I don't think he he's gonna think I'm bluffing like pr- pretty much ever. So I felt like most of the value is just trying to snap off a hand that's going that's going for value that's worse than mine or that's a bluff. Yeah, I think with these stacks re-raising the turn yeah. is not. There's way more like you might have the best hand often enough where like shoving would be profitable with your king of hearts. Right. But I think there's like you said way more value in calling and letting him bluff. Right. Bluff you off something like ace ten or ace nine or something that kind of has a gutter or right. something to go with it. Yeah, it's actually interesting when he turns over. Um, I think this is the hand that I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, he had jacks mm-hmm. with the jack of hearts. So he did uh, slow play something, which yeah. is, uh, you know, it, it makes my life a lot more difficult because it, it you know, it, it it basically opens up his range so much more. Totally. And it's hard for me to, to eliminate hands that I would have eliminated before. So And now that we know that the jacks was in his range, that might weigh us to be more likely to re-raise him on the turn there because he has yeah. a wider value range which is good because that means he's bluffing less, but also he has a lot more worse hands than ours. Yeah, definitely. Um, so why'd you check behind the second pair on the King-9-3? Um, just kind of as like a balancing thing, um, a lot of times I'm going for uh, for two or three streets of value here. I just decided um, that in this spot I was just going to you know, kind of play pot control and Mix it up so that I'm not always checking down a hand, like that I'm have some reasonably strong hands in my range, and it's not always just ace high or bottom pair, especially on like boards that you know where my my second pair looks really strong. Mm-hmm. Like I think he's he's likely to to put me on a second pair, like check behind on boards like that are real coordinated, but on a board like this. I think he expects me to be betting my second pairs uh, a lot, especially on the flop and turn. So I felt like just you know That's mixing not, it up is okay. not not the worst. And thing then ever. on the right hand table, why did you decide just to check call versus check raising for value? I don't think I think he checks behind the flop. Oh, he does. Okay, yeah. I missed that actually. I think I was probably going to check raise, especially with the backdoor hearts possibility. And then just the yeah, after value. Okay. What do you think of his turn bet on the left-hand table with Ace Deuce? Um, I think it's sort of strange, and I, I mean, I guess it's not the worst play in the world. It's just a stone cold bluff with like maybe five outs. But I don't. I mean, I, I, when he pots it, I just. I mean, I guess I am calling with Ace High sometimes, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I just think it's it's a little it's a little sketchy. That's a strange bet too. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised that he made it. Um, and I think I would have bet the river. I know it sucks to get check raised, but like, yeah, there's so many miss. I agree. Draws that, yeah, I agree. So, and I like this bet after checking back the last board. That was pretty dry. I think that's a good spot. Yeah. Definitely.
So are you defending all aces then? No, um, I, I'm not really sure why I just decided to defend ace eight. I mean, I, I feel like I, I don't really like defending ace rag offsuits, especially against him. But um, ace eight, I guess, I mean, it's a little stronger than like ace deuce type stuff. But it, it's pro. I, I usually just like defending like ace nine plus. Yeah, it's that that used to be my standard too, but I. Kind of changed that a little bit. Started defending more suited, a little, more unsuited aces. A little more, um, but he defended a deuce we saw. Yeah, and I, I don't defend that well. Yeah, I'd fold. I'd defend like maybe, you know, I guess most aces, but I think ace deuce is a little weak. Yeah. I haven't been three betting that much this match actually, which is not that common. I guess might partly be due to me being stuck and maybe just no good spots. But yeah, I haven't. I definitely in our previous matches have been three betting a lot more. Mm. So that's interesting that he thinks that Ace King Six hits a lot of your range, or you'll attack it because he gave up with his five high. Yeah, right on the flop and didn't even bluff the turn. Interesting. Yeah, and that's the thing about him that that why I like playing him, and it, but it's also tough playing because he really makes you think a lot, and he's really good at, at adjusting to you and really just like trying new things to you know really kind of mess with your head and stuff like that. So I think it's it, it's definitely a real good test, and it's real it's a real nice challenge playing against him. What do you think he check calls uh, King seven seven board with? I mean, like. Definitely a size, maybe probably some strong queen highs to be honest, and uh, that's some sevens. I mean, he, I, I think he, that's a spot where he's like probably like really balanced. So his range is a lot of ace and queen highs because there's m many more combos of those than yeah. sevens because he plays more of them pre flop and there's two sevens on the board. Uh, what about a river bluffers? Yeah, but I mean, I, I feel like he expects me to bet. A king on the, on the turn, 100% of, of the time. Pretty much 100% of Probably. the time. Then that would not be a good spot for it. I feel like there's... So you're not checking back is, the turn a lot with kings ever? No, pro not against him because, like I said before, he he's just so big on you know calling down flopping turns with weak to marginal hands that I just don't see too much value in, in, in you know balancing in that spot. Although mm -hmm. there definitely is some just... You know, for spots like that to maybe be able to throw in a bluff raise, but uh, yeah. So here, what what are you? Explain to me why you decided to check this. Um, I guess there's no like real, just like real. I guess just kind of just feeling, and you know, I just felt like he was weak. I felt like, I mean, not felt like he was weak, obviously, because it's not like a live poker. It just Felt like it was a good spot to you know throw in a check raise. I don't think I'd thrown in all game, and you know it's a board that I expect him to be betting a lot with his you know ace highs and queen highs, and I expect his range to be somewhat polarized. Although like like I feel like if he has a deuce, he's checking back a lot, and if he has like an ace, like he's he's checking back a lot. So I feel like a lot of times this is just like an overpair or like a, a, good, a pretty strong six or something like that, or just like a bluff. Hmm. Um, I think I would check call here as a standard. I mean, yeah, I think I mean, turning your hand into a bluff isn't that great for you. I mean, like, he's not holding any worse hands. And I know that doesn't totally matter because you're not showing now, but I think he's tricky enough where... He's peeling with all gutters and even over cards if he does think you're you're attacking this board. So I, I think I would prefer a check call there. Even yeah. though it kind of turns your hand face up, you can balance that well with check calling with bigger, yeah. stronger hands. That's the problem is that... I mean, that this is a disaster. You know, this is a train wreck now. Um, basically, any time he calls in this deep, I think he's going to float you a ton. And I don't think turning your hand into a bluff is very good for they say there. Yeah, I mean, my standard is definitely to check call. I just felt, I don't know, kind of, I don't know, just like trying to take the pot down on the flop, I guess. But it's definitely not 
like my standard play. And usually, like if I'm check raise bluffing, it's with something like, like you know, like a four, like an ace four or something with like that yeah. shot, or like a seven eight or something like that. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm not really that big a fan of my play either. Yeah. So it seems like he hasn't been three betting you that much. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of surprising. I thought it'd be. Um, that's another thing that he he really mixes. Like he'll go in spurts where he's literally three betting like forty percent of hands, or maybe even more. And then he'll go in spurts where he just black calls hundred percent of his range. And I just I think it's just completely just you know to mess with my head and really just never like can. So I'm never really comfortable, and I never really know exactly what what he's doing. So it's just something that he just uh, he, and and he'll sometimes do it like from match to match, and then he'll sometimes do it mid match. He'll just start randomly. I think maybe in this match he starts randomly just three betting like a ton after not three betting at all, and he'll, it's just st- stuff that he just uh, kind of just that's just his style. Hmm. Um. So why do you decide to check back these deuces? I've noticed you've been checking back quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, just because uh, it's just a spot where I like to, I don't know, kind of balance my, my checking back range, I guess, because he's just calling down so much, and I, I don't feel like it, it's a spot where I don't really want to turn my hand into a bluff like the last one, and mm-hmm. uh, I feel like he's check calling a lot and it's just going to be an easier hand to play if I just check back the flop and then hopefully it goes check, check. And then, um, I, I just can show down my hand and yeah. I don't have to try and, you know, worry about bluffing him off aces, ace highs, or, you know, his, his draws and stuff like that. So, so here in this spot on this board, I think I would just go ahead and bet fold it. I mean, I feel like checking back, He's never going to let you show down your hand. Um, and it's such a good spot that... It's such a spot where, yeah, you're getting check raised bluffed a lot by a lot of his draws, but you have so little equity against anything that he check raises you with, even his semi-bluffs. I mean, even when he check raises you with, like, you know, uh, four seven or something that has, like, a non-nut gutter, it's still got so much equity against your hand yeah, that... Four seven has to be... Uh, well, I mean yeah, on the flop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, oh, I thought you were talking about on the yeah. yeah, no, I'm talking about just on the flop. Oh, yeah, yeah, your yeah. Your check back. I think I would just go ahead and bet fold uh, all my small pairs on this board. Um, yeah, he's bluffing you a fair amount, but all his, everything he's bluffing you with, I feel like, on this board is some type of draw, strong draw. It's not like he's saying, like, well, I have, you know, king-queen offsuit, and I'm going to bluff you. Like, everything he has on this board yeah. is, like, Way stronger than your deuces, and I think I think I would just go ahead and just bet fold the flop. I just don't think there's any real incentive to checking back, especially when he starts catching on that you're checking back weak stuff, you know? Yeah. Because it's, it's just too hard, and I think c betting that board, you should be c betting that board often against him, even though he is check calling. I think it's fine. So you yeah. see that this really dry board on the left. Yeah, I mean it's just a thing where. It's just, it's a it's a real fine line with him because I mean he just it, it's tough getting into a real groove with him because he'll go through spurts where he's check raising a lot of these drive flops and then where he's check calling a lot or he's always check calling a lot but then he'll he'll go through like spurts where he's check raising like half his his continuing range and then check calling the other half and then he'll also go in spurts where he's like check calling I uh like maybe eighty to ninety percent of his his continuing range. Just to, to balance it, so it's it's definitely tough to, to get into a rhythm versus him, mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah, I just kind of try and mix it up um, with a little bit of random randomization, and then also just some game flow and stuff like that. Cool. So what what are you thinking about bluffing this river? I mean, I I think that I do end up bluffing it, and I think that it's a good bluff just yeah. because I think his range is pretty weak. I I agree. I think it's a great spot to barrel off. I think you, it, I regardless of his results. I think that I do, yeah. Yeah, I think this is a really nice bet by you. Regardless of if he makes the hero call with a six or the three or whatever. But there's so much your value betting too. Yeah. That 
that I think it's just a great spot to barrel off, like you said, and like you obviously did. Um, okay, so on the right, you check back quite a nice draw. What? Yeah, I mean, like I said, um, I'm just trying to, to mix it up here so that he can't really get too good of uh, a feel on what my checking back range is. And like you said, I have been checking back uh, a lot of weak hands. So while this isn't really a made hand, it's like a hand that I don't think he really expects me to check back. So if I hit, I feel like I'm getting paid a decent amount. And then um, also, um, you know, it's, it's just real disguised and also just makes his life more difficult when I'm checking back, you know, yeah. when if I decide to bluff raise the turn when he leads or something like that later, mm -hmm. later on. So when he checked, when he saw you play that deuces that way, what do you think he puts you on when you check this back ace high? I think he puts me, he puts me on ace high a lot, maybe a, a four, like a, you know, a queen four. So is this a good river for you to bet? Um, I think that it's uh, a decent river for me to bet just because, I mean, I don't know. I think that his 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 check calling range is just it's just, I feel like it's he's just when he's checking I feel like he's giving up a lot because he expects me like he expects me to check down a lot of uh, mediocre hands so like my fours and stuff so I feel like when he has like a hand with like some decent value he's gonna usually just go ahead and bet the river for value so when he's checking so check call the turn bet the river yeah that's so, interesting. Um, because I would have thought this would be a bad spot to bluff, but that's a really good argument that you make, that uh, he might be just leaving those rivers, because he does think you have ace high or a four a lot, yeah. and wants to get value. I, I think I end up checking now, to be honest, yeah. but I think it might be a mistake. Okay. Well, Actually, you might end up having the river. On the left-hand table, I think uh, the... Uh, it was a good. I mean, he thought for a while with top pair. And, yeah, and, I he's mean, thinking well with that. Then. Yeah, I mean, it might have just been to keep things consistent, but I think that it was a really good spot for the video off. I agree. Um, so let's see what he does here on the right, and then we'll wrap up this video, and we will be back um, for part two. We get cut again. Yeah. I so there on the right, I would have uh, checked that river for sure because I. Well, one, I don't, I mean, the argument for him leading is a reasonable one, but I just think when you bet the turn, your range looks so weak, and then the river king, you're just not value betting that much. You're value betting like a 10 or some random king that you hit, and I think he's going to put you on way more bluffs. Yeah. I think his logic would be, whether it's right or not, that you're going to have way more bluffs in your range than some 10 or king that you have. So, um, yeah, I think, I I think that... Uh, I think that was, yeah, I mean, I agree with you, and I think that's a bluff that I very, very rarely really make there, yeah. to be honest. I think it's probably partly because I just, I'm just probably a little steamed up, yeah. and I think, yeah, it's a bluff that's not very, not something that I do very often, and probably not too good to play. Cool. Well, um, we'll be back next week then. All right, thanks.